All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble the CyberPower PC Model C series. Um, and then they have the other model number here is Tracer IV GK5MR0O. All right. All right, so we're going to use a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep all the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like this on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Right, so you'll have four here, and then it looks like two here, and then you got four more down here. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove all those screws. If this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, these are customer computers, so I don't own them. So by the time you see this video, I likely won't have the computer on hand, so keep that in mind. All right, and anyways, let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. Um, the screws back here, some of them are kind of staying in place, so I'm going to try with a magnet to see if I can remove them after unscrewing them. <clears throat> so far, all the screws appear to be about the same length, um, but it's always a good idea to keep the screws in order, okay? So these screw, screws also kind of sting in place. Okay. Sometimes I don't know because they'll have like little washers that hold them in place. Um, in this case, I think they're just stuck for some reason. I don't know. They're getting caught on the plastic casing. Okay. So this one has a burnt up charge port. All right. Let's get the magnet and see if we can get those screws out. Kind of. Not really. Oh, yeah. If you wiggle it around and lift it up they do come out with a magnet okay so if you can't get these screws out and they're kind of stuck in the case um, just be careful when you remove the cover so that you don't lose the screws somewhere okay this one seems to be stuck pretty good so I don't think it's gonna come out oh, there we go never mind it did all right so I believe we got all the screws out I don't see anything in the middle here so let's go ahead and pop the bottom cover off. Um, here you can actually see the melted charge port. Or maybe you can see it's the metal pin is actually even kind of bent upwards. Okay, so let's go ahead and try and pop this open. So usually the way I pop this open is I'll open the screen. I'll get my fingernails in the gap here. And I'll push with my thumb on the palm rest. You don't want to push on the trackpad. So we're going to push on the palm rest as we kind of pull with our fingers. So we're basically rotating it like this. Okay. And we're going to just go around. Here you can see now the bottom cover is popping up. We're going to go over to the side and basically do the same thing. Okay. Now we're pulling up the cover and then I'm just sliding my fingernail under the gap to kind of pop up the clips. Okay. We're going to go over to the other side and do the same thing. So get under there. And then while I'm popping it up, just slide my fingernail under there and just follow the crack. All right. So there we go. Now we got the bottom cover up. Oops. There we go. Okay. Um, there's a thermal pad here. Okay. And not much else inside. It looks like, oops, looks like it's soldered to the motherboard, so it's going to be quite difficult to remove this charge port or DC jack. But here you can see the charge port is right here. Um, there's quite a bit of like dust and some uh, hair in here, so probably some pets. All right. Um, anyways, we're going to have to clean that up. <clears throat> Battery looks pretty standard to remove. Um, is there a model number here? Here you can see. All right, GK5CN-00-13-3S1P-0. It's a pretty long battery model number, but that's what they got. Okay, here you can actually see what the battery looks like. So if you order a replacement, just make sure it looks like this. Um, looks like it's held in place with two screws down here. And then you can probably pop up the thing. Yeah. All right, and this kind of connector is the kind where you have the wings and you kind of just wiggle to pull it out. All right, you got an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD right here, and those come out just like every other model. Two USB ports and SD card slot right here. You got these two connectors going in. So this connector goes underneath the motherboard. It looks like there's another M.2 slot, 
might be PCIe NVMe, I'm not sure. Um, oh yeah, it does say PCIe right there in a tiny label. Okay, and then they actually provide the screw there, so if you lose it. I'm going to assume this one little cable that's here is for the power button, but let's go ahead and... Yeah, I think that's for the power button. So this cable likely leads to the power buttons. You got the two fans, of course. One connector's here. The other one, the connector's here. You got this connector here for the speakers. Maybe I should zoom in a bit so you guys can see better. Okay, this connector for the speakers. You got the Bio CMOS RTC real-time clock battery, this red and black cable. Wireless cards here. There are wireless antennas going underneath, so make sure if you're going to remove this. You can watch my other videos on how to remove them, but um, you just pop them up by the tail. This uh, Killer 1650X wireless card, all right, as you can see. All right, I'm not going to pop that out either. You got the um, Ethernet port here, another USB port, and the two audio jacks down there. And I showed the speakers, so here you can see the speakers, both wires running along the bottom. And yeah, and they plug into this connector right there. Okay, you got the LCD, LVDS, or screen connector here. If you mess with this, make sure to disconnect the battery first. Um, again, you just grab this and you kind of just wiggle it and eventually it will pop out. And press and hold the, then open the computer, press and hold the power button for 15 seconds before you touch this. Because if you mess with that and you don't drain that, there's a good chance you'll either fry something on the motherboard or even damage the screen or the cable or all three. Okay. Anyways, you got the RAM here. There's two slots. Um, a lot of people like to ask me how many slots, even though it's kind of, I, I would think it's obvious, but I guess maybe not. All right. So anyways, let's go ahead and peel up this plastic to, to get it out of the way. And then you can go ahead and pull the two tabs to the side. The RAM will pop up like this. You can pull it out. Here you can see team group RAM, eight gigs, DDR4, 22666. So you should be able to use any PC4 2666 RAM. There's two eight gig sticks. You can put two 16 gig sticks if you want. All right, I don't know if this was upgraded after the fact. Um, cause usually team group RAM I see is, um, uh, aftermarket purchase. So I don't know. It could be, they just come with that and yeah, there's not much else. CPUs here, GPUs here. They are both soldered to the motherboard. So yep. Everyone keeps asking if they can upgrade it. And the answer is unless you have access to some really expensive hardware, um, tools to heat this whole chip up and pull it off and then reball the solder and put a new one um, the answer is going to be no um, or you can also find a motherboard with a upgrade and then you can swap that out but for most people the answer is pretty much no it's not going to be worth it all right um, then you got the keyboard connector here um, i think this is for a fingerprint sensor but there's nothing in there then you got I'm gonna guess that's for the trackpad, and then this is the keyboard backlight. Usually the keyboard backlight is this orangey brown connector, and these have like little flip latches that you flip up to pull the connectors out. All right, anyways, I'm gonna have to see what I can find as far as the charge port DC jack. This is what it looks like on the back. Looks like a somewhat standard one, but uh, we'll have to see. Uh, let me see if there's a motherboard model number on here somewhere. Sometimes it's under the RAM, so let's go ahead and pop this stick of RAM out. Nope, nothing there. Um, unless it's this uh, sticker here. So at the bottom of here, there's a sticker. I don't know if that's a motherboard model number. That could just be like a serial number or something. Um, yeah, because that doesn't look like a model number. Anyways, let's go ahead and put the stick of RAM back in goes back, oops, sorry, it goes back in at an angle like that, and then you just click it down into place. Let's double check under this RAM because I didn't look that closely. And no, there's some more numbers there, but those don't look like motherboard model numbers. So we're just going to, there's some dust there. We're just going to put this thing back in. Come on. Go. And yeah, I'm going to clean the dust out and I'll be back. I have my customer waiting outside, so I don't want to leave them waiting too long. But um, let me go clean this out and I'll be back. Let's get this actually for a thumbnail. Actually, probably too much, but there we go.
Okay. All right, so I'm gonna clean this thing up and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, so we cleaned it out. We're gonna put this back together. Hopefully, eventually we'll be making a charge port replacement video. But for now, we're just gonna put it back together. Just get everything lined back up. Click everything back in. Okay. Go, and let's go ahead and get all the screws back together into place. All right, and that's pretty much all there is to at least getting the bottom cover off. Hopefully this video helps some of you guys at least to upgrade your RAM or SSD um, so you can see where everything is. If you're not sure how to remove the SSD and things like that, it's just one screw and it pops up and comes out just like the RAM. Um, and again, I have a whole bunch of other videos where if I'm actually upgrading or replacing those things, I, I take them out. So... Yeah, anyways, hopefully this video helped. If it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Other than that, that's pretty much it. You're welcome to stay as I put back the rest of the screws. But that's all there is to it. All right. Let's get all these last few screws back in. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Alright, let's drop this spike.